We'll call upon the next speaker, Ms. Uh, Dr. Joita Das, Eyelid Reconstruction, VAST. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, EIUC Scientific Committee, especially Dr. Feruj, for the kind inf invitation. I'll be talking on eyelid reconstruction. So as we all know that eyelid reconstruction is a challenging task to all plastic surgeons, specifically because of its dynamic complexity nature of the eyelid. It's playing a role of globe protection, maintains the integrity of ocul ocular surface and tear frame, and uh, it also has role in lacrimal pump and uh, expression of beauty. So knowledge of basic anatomy is very essential for proper reconstruction of the eyelid. The eyelid is an elliptical structure with a horizontal fissure height of fissure length is 25 to 30 millimeter and the vertical fissure palpable fissure height is around 8 to 10 millimeter. Lateral canthus is around 2 millimeter higher than the medial canthus. For the purpose of uh, reconstruction, the eyelid is grossly divided into two lamella, anterior lamella formed by skin and orbicularis muscle, and the posterior lamella formed by tarsal plate and the conjunctiva. And there is a structure called gray line, which is the junction between these two lamellae. Uh, one another important thing is uh, relief skin tension line, which is also known as Langer's line. This is uh, the, the muscle tension line, and the importance of this are if we do give a incision along the or parallel to this Langer's line, there will be minimum scar. And when there is large tissue gap, the suture closing should be tangential or oblique to the Langer's line. The indication of eyelid reconstruction are congenital, that is coloboma is the most common, post uh, and the, um, among the acquired cause, primary reconstruction after tumor surgery, trauma, and secondary reconstruction after complicated previous surgery, burns, and radiation. Uh, whenever we are planning for a lead reconstruction, we maintain some of the goals are preserving the eyelid function to develop a stable eyelid margin. We should ensure adequate eyelid closure for ocular protection, maintaining adequate vertical lead height, and the most important is creating a smooth epithelized internal surface, and also we should maximize the symmetry and cosmesis. The principle of eyelid reconstruction first is, if we are planning for reconstruction of the full thickness lead defect, that is both anterior and posterior lamella is absent, then if we use graft for one lamella, then other lamella should be the flap, that is it should have its own blood supply. Here you can see the example, the posterior lamella has been, uh, uh, has been grafted from the upper uh, other lead tarsal conjunctiva and the uh, anterior lamella is formed by pedicle graft. The other principle are you should maintain a sufficient canthal fixation, we should match the tissue, similar color and thickness, and if we are planning for skin grafting, first we should minimize the defect area as much as possible before sizing a graft. Uh, in the assessment of lead defect, as you should see, this is the full thickness or partial thickness, lead margin involvement, size location of the defect, canthal involvement is there or not, canaliculi status, and of course the, the age of the patient or the lead laxity. The management algorithm are, if the both lam uh, only the anterior lamella is affected, then direct closure, leases fair, that is healing by secondary intention, local flap like VY flap, bilobe or rhomboid flap, or if it is a big one, then skin grafting can be done. And if it is the marginal or full thickness defect, then size of the defect plays the role. If it is a small defect of 25 to 50 percent, then direct closure plus minus canthoplasty. If it is a medial uh, defect, that is 50 to 75 percent, then tangels, uh, tangels flap and magregor flaps play the role. And if the large defect, that is more than 75 percent, then if it is in the upper lid, then cutler beard flap, mustardy switch flap, or glabular flap is the choice of flap. And if it is in the lower lid, then huges flap, master D cheek rotation flap option is there. And there are some specialized flap called pre-K, paramedian, and tri flap. These are, these can be used in both upper and the lower lid. 
This is one example of direct closure using upper uh, only anterior lamellar defect repair. This is this is fear that is healing by secondary intention. Eyelid has a very um, peculiar, unique property that it, it has a very good blood supply and it can heal the defect uh, automatically, but it takes some time. This is an example of upper lid full thickness skin graft in a case of pilomatrixoma. And uh, there are also option of OPUI rhomboid and bilobed This is an example of one of my patients. They had done rhomboid flap in this case. So this is a short, uh, now come to the full thickness margin defect. If it is a small, that is 25 to 50%, then direct closure can be done first. Uh, horizontal mattress, vertical mattress, which is given in five, three, three millimeter rule. Then the suture is tight and keep it long. Rest of the sutures are given uh, muscle and the tarsal plate is sutured by interrupted uh, suture by 6 o vicryl. And finally, the long end of the suture is tight with the uh, interrupted suture for avoiding corneal trauma. Next come to the medium size defect, tangential semicircular flap is the option. Here this is a short video of the procedure. This is a case of a uh, golden heart syndrome and uh, this is a wedge size flap has been present. Next, plus lateral canthoplasty is done. Lateral canthus upper um, um, arm is cut and then a small uh, semicircular myocutaneous flap has been dissected. Now the suture is uh, as the direct one vertical mattress suture. And uh, finally, the lateral canthoplasty and the muscular flap has been sutured, even interrupted suture. This is the case uh, of this, this is the case I've done, just done now. This is the two weeks of post-op follow-up. Next is, uh, if it is a, um, more than 75% defect. If, if it is upper lid, cutler BR is the option. That is the full thickness flap from the lower lid. This is a short video clippings of the same. First, after taking the um, malignant uh, tumor along, after taking that uh, frozen section, the, um, uh, the defect has been closed from the full thickness uh, myocutaneous flap from the lower lid. The full thickness flap has been made. And uh, lamella, two lamellas are divided first. The posterior lamella then advanced and sutured with the upper end of the defect. And uh, we should also take care to tie the LPS muscle along with the graft and the skin muscle has been tied accordingly. After six weeks, the flap is divided. This is the pre and post-op result of the same. And this is another less commonly used technique Sorry, less commonly used technique that is mustard is switch flap. It is used um, uh, in various, um, it is less commonly used. And sorry, this is the preoperative and the postoperative picture of this procedure. Next is if it is lower lid, um, uh, more than 75% defect, you can do a huge flap that is upper lid torso conjunctival flap shifted to the lower lid and the up anterior lamella is um, switch your, uh, anterior lamella formed by either free skin graft or uh, pedicle uh, graft uh, from the upper lid. This is a short video clipping of the huge flap. First, after taking the tumor dissection, this is a gap defect. And after margin clearance, the defect is uh, measured and replicated in the upper lid tarsal plate after uh, uh, keeping that five millimeter marginal gap to maintain the upper lid stability. This is the, uh, the tarso conjunctival graft. Up to uh, molars and muscle, we have to dissect it out. And uh, it is advanced posterior uh, downwards and suture with the remaining end of the tarsal plate of the lower lid. Then from the cheek, skin muscle advancement flap has been taken. 
This is the Baro's triangle we're drawing. Okay, just last minute. And it is advanced to form the anterior lamella of the newly formed lid. Okay. This is the pre and post operative picture of this patient. There are some specialized graft called glabular, gla glabular flap, which can be used in both, uh, used in upper lid reconstruction. The nasogeal flap, which are for uh, to fill the defect of the medial lower lid defect. This is the pre and post op picture of this space. So the take clinic pearls from this presentation are the eyelid reconstruction is one of the more challenging areas of the face to reconstruct because of its dynamic complexity. And when approaching lead reconstruction, a thorough understanding of the surgical anatomy is very important for planning a successful surgical approach. And selection of appropriate eyelid reconstruction depends on patient age, comorbidities, eyelid condition, defect size and position, and of course, surgeon expertise and preference. Thank you for your present hearing.